Hello all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say a customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with, the, with His commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord, our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, God, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence to enlighten you. May he be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's reading, I do believe this is how you pronounce it, Ve'yeshiv. He settled. T Torah for today is Genesis 37, 1 through 40, 23. Prophets is Amos 2. 6 through 3 8. Our bread Hadesha is John 2 13 through 4 42 7 39 through 37 through 39 Acts 7 9 through 10 Revelations 21 1 through 22 21. Oops. Come in. Genesis 37, 1 through 40, 23. Jacob lived in the land of his father sojourning in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Come on, go down. Joseph, being 17 years old, was pasturing the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with the son. It was a boy with the sons of Bilha and Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report to them. Report of them to their father. Now Israel lo loved Joseph more than any of his sons, because he was a son of his old age. And he made him a robe of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him. Could not speak peacefully to him. Now Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed, or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and his words. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers. And said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? When his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. Now his brothers went to pasture their flocks, their father's flock near Sheshem. Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are you not your brothers pat are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to him, Here I am. So he said to them, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with well with the flock. And bring me word. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came from came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. And the man asked him, What are you seeking? I'm seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where the, were they pasturing the flock? Where are they pasturing the flock? I'm sorry. Misspelled. And the man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from afar, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of heard it, he rescued him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. 
And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here and in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him. That he might rescue him out of their hand to restore him to his father. So then when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the robe of many colors that he wore, and they took him and threw him in a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat and looked up as they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gal Gilead <clears throat> with their camels bearing gum, balm, and myrrh. On their way to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come now, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Then Midianite traders passed by, and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit, and they sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes and returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where shall I go? Then they took Joseph's robe and slaughtered a goat and dripped the robe, dipped the robe in the blood, and they sent a robe of many colors and brought it To their father and said, This is what we have found. Please identify whether it is your son's robe or not. And he identified it and said, It is my son's robe. A fierce animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters rose up and to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted and said, No, I shall go down in a shield. To my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him to Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. It happened at the time that Ju it happened at the time that Judah went down from his bro from his brothers and turned aside to a certain man, Adullam turned aside to a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hurrah. There, Judah saw the daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua. He took her and went into her, and she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Er. She conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. Yet again she bore a son, and she called his name Shelah. Judah was in Shezib when she bore him. And Judah took a wife for Er firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of Yahweh, and Yahweh put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, Go unto your brother's wife, and perform the duty of a brother-in-law to her, and raise up offspring for your brother. But Onan knew the offspring should would not be his. So whenever he went into his brother's wife, he could not waste the semen. So when he went into his brother's wife, he would waste the semen on the ground so as not to give offspring to her brother. And what he did was wicked in the sight of Yahweh, and he put him to death also. Then Judah said to Jamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house till Shelah, my son, grows up. For he feared that he would die, like his brothers. So Tamar went and remained in her father's house. In the course of, ti of time, the wife of Judah, Shua's daughter, died. When Judah was comforted, he went up to t Timnah to his sh sheep bearers. He and his fr friend, Hirah the uh, Dolomite. And when Tamar was told, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear sheep. She took off her widow's garments and covered herself with a veil, wrapping herself up, and sat at the entrance to a name, which is on the road to Timnah. For she saw that Sheila was grown up, and she had not been given to him in marriage. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. He turned to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come into you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. 
She said, What will you give me that I may come into you? He answered, I will send you a young goat from the flock. She said, If you give me a pledge until you send it. He said, I will pl What pledge shall I give you? She replied, Your signet and your cord and your staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and went into her. And she conceived <coughs> by him. Then she rose and went away. And taking off her veil, she put on the garments of her widowhood. When Judah sent the youngest goat and by his friend, the Adulamite, to take back the pledge from the woman's hand, he did not find her. And he asked from the and he asked the men of the place, Where is the cult prostitute who was at Enam at the roadside? And they said, No cult prostitute has been here. So he returned to Judah and said, I have not found her. Also the men of the place said, No cult prostitute has been here. And Judah replied, Let her keep the things as her own, or we shall be laughed at. You see, I sent this young goat, and you did not find her. Come on, go down. About three months later, Judah was told, Tomorrow your daughter-in-law has been immoral. Moreover, she is pregnant by immorality. And Judah said, Bring her out, and let her be burned. As she was being brought out, she sent word to her father-in-law, By the man to whom these things belong, I am pregnant. And she said, Please identify whose these are, the signet and the cord and the staff. When Judah identified them and said, She is more righteous than I, since I did not give her to my son Sheila, and she did not know her, and he did not know her again. <clears throat> when a time of labor came, there were twins in her womb, and when she was in labor, one put out a hand, and the midwife took and tied a scarlet thread on his hand, saying, This one came out first. But as he drew back his hand, behold, his brother came out, and she said, what a breach you have made for yourself. Therefore his name was called Perez. Afterwards his brothers came out with the scarlet thread on his hand and his name was called Zira. <coughs> now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of the Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian had brought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. Bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. Yahweh was with Joseph, and he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that Yahweh was with him, and that Yahweh caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. And he made himself overseer of his house, and put him in charge of all that he had. From, that, from the time that he made him his overseer in his house, and over all that he had, Yahweh blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of Yahweh was on all that he had in the house of the field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge. And because of him he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And after time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of, my, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is, no, he is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. He then, How then can I do these, this great wickedness and sin against Elohim? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie down beside her, Come on, go down. Man, you're being slow today. Down.
Now Joseph was handsome and I think I already read that. Well, one day when he was when he went Oh, to lie beside her or to be with her. But one day when he went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was there in the house, she caught him by his garment saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. And as soon as she saw that he left his garment in her hand and had fled the house, she called to the men of her household and he said, See, he, he has brought among us a Hebrew to laugh at us. He came to, in to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice, and as soon as he heard that, I lifted up my voice and cried out. He left his garment beside me and fled and got out of the house. Then she laid up his garment by her until his master came home, and she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have brought among us came in to, me, to laugh at me. But as soon as I lifted up my voice and cried, he left his garment beside me and fled out of the house. As soon as his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, he said, This is the way your servant treated me. His anger was kindled, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. But Yahweh was with Joseph and showered him in steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge because Yahweh was with him. And whatever he did, Yahweh made it succeed. Sometime after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker committed an offense against their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers. Chief Cupbearer and the Chief Baker, and he put them in custody of the house of the Captain of the Guard in the prison where Joseph was confined. The Captain of the Guard appointed Joseph to be with them, and he attended them. They continued for some time in custody, and one night they both dreamed the Cupbearer and the Baker of the King of Egypt, who were confined in prison, each his own dream, and each dream with its own interpretation. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he he saw that they were troubled, so he asked the Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his master's death, Why are your faces downcast today? They said to him, We have had dreams, and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, Do not in do not do not interpretations belong to Elohim. Please tell them to me. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph and said to them, In my dream there was a vine before me, and on the vine there were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed. its blossoms shot forth, and clusters ripened in the grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and passed them in the Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup on the Pharaoh's hand. Then Joseph said to him, This is its interpretation. The three, the three branches are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore to you your office, and you shall place Pharaoh's cup on his hand for formally, as formerly when you were his cupper. Only remember me when it is well with you, and please do not, and please do me the kindness to mention me to Pharaoh, as so, and so get me out of this house. For I was indeed stolen out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also I have done nothing that they should put me into the pit. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. There were three cake baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket there were all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh. But the birds were eating it out of the basket of, of my head, <laughs> on my head. And Joseph answered and said, this is its interpretation. The three baskets are three days. In three days, Pharaoh shall lift up your head from you and hang you on a tree, and all the birds will eat the flesh from you. On the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, he made a feast for all his servants, lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position and placed the cup in the Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Hey Nick, can you give me a drink? Yes, that's in there. 
<coughs> Amos 2, 6 through 3, 8. Thus says Yahweh, for three transgressions of Israel and for four I will not revoke the punishment because they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. But those who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and turn aside from the way of the afflicted, a man and his father go into the same girl so that my holy name is profaned. They lay themselves down beside every altar or ornaments taken in pledge. And in the house of their Elohim they drink the wine of those who have been fined. <clears throat> yet it is, yet it was I who destroyed the Amorites before them, whose height is like the height of of the cedars, and whose and who is as strong as the oaks. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Also, it was I who brought you up out of the land of Egypt and led you forty years in the wilderness to possess the lamb of, land of the Amorite. And raised up some of your sons for prophets and some of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not indeed so, O people of Israel, declares Yahweh? But you made the Nazarite drink wine and commanded the prophets, saying, You shall not prophesy. prophesy. Behold, I will press you down in your place as a cart full of sheaves pressed down. Flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not retain strength. Nor shall the mighty save his life. He who handles the bow shall not stand, and who, he who is swift on foot shall not save himself. Nor shall he who rides on rides a horse save his life. And he, he, and he who is stout of heart among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, declares Yahweh. Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O people Israel. Against the whole family that I brought up out of the land of Egypt, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Do two walk together unless you have agreed to meet? Does a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from its from his den if he has not if he has taken nothing does a bird fall in a snare upon a snare on the earth when there is no trap for it does a snare spring up from the ground when it is when it has taken nothing as a trumpet blown in a city and the people are not afraid does disaster come into a city unless Yahweh has done it for the Lord Elohim does nothing without revealing a secret to his servants the prophets the lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord Elohim has spoken. Who can put? Who can but prophesy? John two thirteen through four forty two. The Passover of the Jews was at hand and. Yeshua went up from Jerusalem in the temple. He found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there and making a whip of cords. He drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen. He poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he said to them, Those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house the house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Yeshua answered him, Destroy this temple, and in three days it will rise. I will raise it up. The Jews said, It has taken forty-six years to build this temple. And will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the word that Yeshua had spoken. Now when Yeshua was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Yeshua on his part did not entrust himself to them. 
because he knew all people. And indeed no one to bear witness about him about man, for he himself knew what was in man. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The man came to Yeshua by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from you are a teacher, come from Elohim. For no man so for no one can do these things that you do unless Elohim is with him. Yeshua answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeshua answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Elohim. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sounds, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Yeshua answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak... <coughs> of what we know, and bear witness to what we have seen. But you, do not receive our testimony. If I told you think, if I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descends from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent, in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begot gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For Elohim did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of Elohim. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and the people love the darkness, rather than the light because, rather than the light because their works are evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes into the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in Elohim. After this, Yeshua and his disciples went into the Judean countryside and remained there with them and was baptizing. John was also baptizing at Anan near Selim because water was plentiful there and people were coming and being baptized for John had not yet been put in prison. Now a discussion arose between some of the John's disciples and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to them, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, A person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I have said, I am not Hamashiach, but I have been sent before him. The one who has taken, the one who has the bride, is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and, shears and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, the joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from the heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that Elohim is true. For he 
whom Elohim has sent utters the word of Elohim, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim remains on him. Now when Yeshua learned that the Pharisees had heard that Yeshua was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Yeshua himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, they left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria, so he came to a town of Samaria called Shikar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Yeshua wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A man from Samaria came to draw water. Yeshua said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The, Samarian, the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Sam Samarian knights. Samaritans. Yeah. Yeshua answered her, If you know the gift of Elohim and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would give you living water. And the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us this well and drank from from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Yeshua said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give them, will give him, will never be thirsty again. The water that I give to him, that I will give him, will become a in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I will not be thirsty, or have come here, have to come here to draw water. Yeshua said to him, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Yeshua said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have five husbands, and one you now have is not your husband. What you have is said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I receive that you are a prophet. Her father's worship on this mountain. But you said it that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Yeshua said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and it is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father and the Spirit in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. Elohim is Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in the Spirit of Truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, He who is called Hamashiach. When He comes, He will tell us all things. Yeshua said to Him, I who speak to you am He. When His disciples came back, they marveled that He was talking with a woman, but no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me all that he all that I ever did. Can this be Hamashiach? They went out of the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has he brought something to eat? Yeshua said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to accomplish his works. Do not say, There are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. 
one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samar Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the women, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this in is indeed the Savior of the world. Come on. Go down. Thank you. John seven thirty seven through 39 On the last day of the feast, the great day, Yeshua stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to rejoice for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Yeshua was not yet glorified. Acts 7, 9-10 And the patriarchs jealous of Joseph sought him into Egypt, sold him into Egypt, sorry. But Elohim was with him, and rescued him out of all his affliction, and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh the king of Egypt, who made him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Revelations 21 through 22:21, And that would be Lucas. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from Elohim, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. And as I heard the loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of Elohim is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And Elohim himself will be there, will be with them as their Elohim. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who has seated, and he who is seated on a throne, behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. <clears throat> I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have his heritage, and I will be his Elohim, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, and the detestable, as for murderers and the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. Their portions will be the lake of will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. <sighs> then came one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me saying, Come, I will show you the bride and the wife and the lamb. And he carried me away in the, sp in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven and Elo out of heaven from Elohim. Having the glory of Elohim, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal, it had a, high, had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels. And on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east gates, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its gates and walls. The city lies four square. It's linked the same as its width. And he measured the city with his rod. Twelve thousand stadia. It's linked and width and height are equal. And he measures its wall. One hundred and forty-four cubits. 
by human measurements, which is also an angel's measurement. The wall was built of jasper, while the city was pure gold like the glass. It was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, second sapphire, second sapphire. The third <laughs> agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth uh, chrysophase, the eleventh Jacob's Jacinth, the twelfth amethyst, and the twelve gates were, were twelve pearls. Each of the gates made of a single pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for as simple as the Lord Elohim and the mighty Elohim the Almighty and Lamb. And the city had no need for a sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of Elohim gives it light. And its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it, and its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into the glory and the honor, they will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written into the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb through the midst of the street, through, oh, through the middle of the street of the city also, on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit yielding each, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of Elohim or of the Lamb will be in it. And his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more. They will need no light or lamp of lamp or sun. For the Lord Elohim will be their lights, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord the Elohim of the spirits of the prophets has sent his angel to show his servants what must take... Bleh, to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. <coughs> Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy, prophecy in his book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of his, this book, worship Elohim. And he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy out of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs, and the sorcerers, and the sexually immoral, and the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the more bright morning star. The spirit of the bride says, Come, and let the one who bears oops come and let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who is des who desires 
take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the word of the prophets of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of the book of prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. And he who testifies to these things say, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Yeshua. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. Uh, yep, that is it. Just, I'm it. Oh, this one is entertaining. Sorry about that, guys. Alright, what did I do with it? No, I'm tired and I'm trying to keep myself up. I wanted to make sure I got this done for everybody. I am willing to do that. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the, of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Lord, O Lord, giver of the Torah. <sighs> Alright guys, sorry about that. Um, fighting sleep. Little tired. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Come on.